Hey there, it's Dr. Jim. Thank you for taking some time uh, with me. I have a very important topic. Um, it's a CBD-related topic, and um, portions of it come from my book, Living Longer and Stronger with CBD, and um, the research that I did on CBD and its effectiveness for post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. And believe it or not, there has been research in that particular area looking at CBD and PTSD uh, since 2008. So they've been looking at it for a while. So let me share with you uh, this pretty detailed article that I wrote. Um, if you like to read, you know, please take a look at it and share it with others. It, um, it's very revealing and it's very encouraging. Um, if you know someone with PTSD, this might be um, a good article to share with them as well. So post-traumatic stress disorder can happen to anybody. While not everyone who does experience a trauma or a series of traumas will develop PTSD, but many will. Um, PTSD is one of several disorders found in this book, the DSM-5, it's heavy, <laughs> that I go back to quite often. Um, read the whole thing several times, but I go back to particular chapters quite frequently on different disorders. Um, it's commonly treated with a combination of therapy, counseling, uh, life skills development and maintenance, as well as psychiatric medications. But research findings are very encouraging on CBD's ability to do a couple things. Manage symptoms. It's not curing anything. But in many studies, and I'll share some results with you, it does improve symptoms and it does help to bring back quality of life for individuals because PTSD is a very serious mental and emotional condition. So here's a quick overview of PTSD. This is a disorder that's defined as chronic and debilitating. It is a true psychiatric condition that can develop after experiencing a traumatic, shocking, dangerous, or intensely stressful event. It affects both the mind and the body and is related to the brain's extinction process. And this is something that helps to reduce the emotional impact of traumatic memories after we experience something uh, pretty dreadful. Here are some symptoms. Now, not everyone is going to develop all of these symptoms, but for some individuals, these symptoms will appear within the first three months after experiencing something very traumatic. For other individuals, these symptoms can appear several months down the road or even years after the trauma has occurred. So here are the major symptoms of PTSD. Nightmares, difficulty sleeping, feelings of guilt or shame, negative mood and negative thinking, avoidance, of thinking or talking about the trauma, flashbacks, being easily frightened or alarmed, always being on guard, and that's a term called hypervigilance, avoiding places or activities that m might remind the individual of the event that occurred, poor concentration, sometimes aggressive behaviors are seen, Loss of interest in many things in life, including things that were once enjoyed, like hobbies. And unfortunately, substance misuse is a part of this clinical condition. Um, and mainly, these substances are used as self-medication to get rid of the feelings, to try to get rid of the memories, so on and so forth. So, diagnosis. These symptoms can range from mild, moderate, to very severe. They may occur a 
occasionally, they may occur more frequently. To be diagnosed, though, with PTSD, a variety of these symptoms must be present for over a month, and they have to be severe enough to interfere with a person's life, their work, and relationships. And the course of the illness varies depending upon the person. Some will recover within a few months. Others will experience symptoms for years. And there are people who will unfortunately deal with PTSD for the rest of their lives. Now, let's look at prevalence uh, because these figures are important and very telling. In terms of the general population in the U.S., around 7 to 8 percent, or 7 or 8 out of every 100 people in our country, will have PTSD at some time throughout their lives. Roughly 8 million adults, 18 and over, have PTSD this year, they had it last year, they'll have it next year. So within any given year, around 8 million adults will experience PTSD. 10 out of every 100 women, or 10% of the female population, and much less, 4 out of every 100 men, which is 4%, will develop PTSD at some point throughout their lives. Now, veterans of war. This is a different situation. The prevalence for veterans of war is much higher. Roughly 11 to 20% of military personnel who served in operations Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom will have PTSD in any given year. Among those who served in the Gulf War, or Desert Storm, 12% will develop PTSD. And by far the highest prevalence of veterans experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder are those who served in Vietnam. And that number is over 30%, which is incredibly high and terribly sad. Now, what about World Wars I and two, did PTSD exist? It did. It existed actually before World Wars I and two, but the term wasn't called PTSD yet. It was called battle fatigue, or sometimes it was referred to as shell shock during World Wars I and two. PTSD wasn't officially called post-traumatic stress disorder, until thousands and thousands of soldiers came home from Vietnam and they were showing signs of depression, anxiety, guilt for what happened, what they saw, what they did, insomnia, nightmares, flashbacks. And one of the most prominent symptoms at the time was the inability to develop a close relationship with people that they loved, their family, their friends, their partners. So it was a real horrible homecoming for a lot of our veterans from Vietnam. And it was finally in 1980 that this is the DSM-5, but back then in 1980, it was the DSM-3, which was the third edition. Okay, we keep creating new editions to the DSM, but it was in the DSM-3 that post-traumatic stress disorder finally was an official diagnosis and found its home in this book. Now, veterans have higher rates of PTSD, so do first responders. Rates of PD PTSD also run higher among First responders, including emergency medical services personnel, firefighters, and police officers. It's estimated that around 30%, again, very high, of first responders develop emotional and behavioral conditions like depression, anxiety, and PTSD. 
Firefighters also have a higher rate of suicidal thinking and attempts than the general population. And between 125 to 300 police officers sadly commit suicide every year. So I want to share some research findings right from my book. I'll make them short and sweet because research has been going on uh, for many years now. So the first thing I want to talk about is the endocannabinoid system. Studies examining the use of CBD for PTSD go back to 2008, where researchers in Virginia found that the endocannabinoid system affects learning and forgetting about both pleasant and unpleasant experiences. The endocannabinoid system plays a role in the extinction of avoidance-motivated behaviors, avoid the place, avoid thinking, avoid talking, and these are key features of PTSD. Nabilone. Nabilone is a medication. It's been out for a while, and it's a synthetic laboratory-created cannabinoid. And it was found that 72% of patients in a study in Canada experienced either a cessation of nightmares or a significant reduction in nightmare intensity. Some people reported improvements in sleep time, sleep quality, reduction in night sweats, and a reduction in flashbacks. Those are all good findings. I told you this would be encouraging. Now, CB1 receptors and the amygdala. Another study in Israel discovered that the amygdala, which is our fear, fear processing part of the limbic system, contains a large number of CB1 receptors that are sitting there and waiting for cannabidiol or CBD to attach to them, turn the key, and unlock the potential of what we already have, our body, our brain. Researchers injected a synthetic cannabinoid into the brains of rats who were induced with PTSD symptoms artificially in the laboratory. And they discovered that it reduced anxiety, a gradual decrease in the response to condition stimulus, and inhibitory avoidance, which is memory of the trauma. That's promising. Here's an important lesson from 9-11. In 2013, an important paper was published examining the reductions in endocannabinoid levels in people with PTSD following the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Centers in New York. Researchers reported that they had evidence of a reduction in circulating endocannabinoid levels in people with PTSD after being exposed to that traumatic event. They believe that deficient endocannabinoid signaling might be a part of the glutocorticoid dysregulation, which is significant inflammation-associated neural damage, which is associated with PTSD. Here's the bottom line. It appears that the endocannabinoid system plays an important role in the control of our emotions. It might be able to regulate the fear response, which is common among so many people with PTSD. And CBD may also be effective in reducing the fear that's associated with this disorder. Here's some more research findings before I wrap things up. A research team from the UK and Brazil found that CBD treats both anxiety-related disorders as well as substance-related disorders, both of which are associated with PTSD. CBD also was found to reduce fear memory expression 
an learned fear expression. And here's an important study. An important study in Colorado found that among a group of participants taking CBD for post-traumatic stress disorder, 91% experienced a decrease in PTSD symptom severity. CBD was well tolerated and nobody in the study had to stop taking it due to negative side effects. The researchers in Colorado believe that CBD can be an add-on treatment with other psychiatric medications and therapy to better improve and manage PTSD symptoms. That's fantastic. Now, here are my final thoughts. And thank you for hanging in there and listening and watching. I, I hope you're getting some good information. And I'm going to keep coming out with CBD and this disorder and that disorder constantly. So keep coming back for more. Post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD has been around for a long time. It surely uh, predates World Wars I and II and has affected millions of people in the United States and around the world. Now, while there are traditional ways of treating those diagnosed with PTSD, the research findings on CBD and the endocannabinoid system specifically are producing some pretty hopeful and encouraging results. More research is needed to better understand how CBD can improve the lives of those dealing with this difficult and sometimes lifelong disorder. Thank you so much for spending a lot of time with me. I know this was kind of lengthy, but I had a lot of good, significant information to share with you. My name is Dr. Jim. Keep coming back for more information on CBD and human disorders. Thank you for watching the video, and I'd like to show you my new book, Living Longer and Stronger with CBD. It took me about a year and a half to write as I scanned hundreds of articles in prestigious journals, peer-reviewed medical studies, examining the effects of CBD for various physical conditions, emotional and mental issues, and neurodegenerative conditions. And I condensed all of those findings into one book. I believe that there's something in here for everyone. So if you're interested, follow the link to the book on Amazon. Thank you so much.